We have a very special patient today. She flies from New York. She has this relatively small Tarlof cyst, but with big symptoms of genital pelvic dysesthesias, which also includes urinary symptoms. She's been diagnosed in the past with interstitial cystitis, and obviously those treatments have not worked. She underwent a very uh, thorough workup by several physicians um, and also underwent a diagnostic injection via caudal epidural with anesthetic and she had a temporary marked improvement of her symptoms. So all things point toward this Tarlof cyst causing her symptoms. Even though we know most Tarlof cysts are asymptomatic, there are a small proportion of patients with Tarlof cysts that do have symptoms and we just have to find those patients so that we can treat them. Her symptoms are quite debilitating in terms of her quality of life and uh, function. And so we've elected to proceed with surgical treatment in an effort to get her back to her busy lifestyle in New York. We will utilize three-dimensional imaging and navigation to precisely identify the optimal surgical corridor so that we can target uh, the cyst with minimal collateral damage. We will reach inside there under microscope magnification and microscopic dissection techniques to break up all the little septations that are usually there that act as a one-way check valve and over time starts building up with fluid pressure. We'll break those up and then we'll close and remove the tarlop cyst by, the, uh, by using a procedure that we call imbrication, which is simply an over of the dural tube so that it assumes a more normal position. We're all hoping that she gets a great result so that she can get back to her busy lifestyle. Alrighty, we're getting started. We have the computer navigation reference pin in, in uh, the bone here. And I feel like I'm a cheater. I can look on the computer now and identify the perfect entry point. Your Tarlov cyst is right there where the yellow line is. Marking pen. So I will now be able to make the smallest incision possible because I know exactly where the bullseye is. So that's one of the secrets to my success. Cheating. Because you know what my mom always said, if you don't cheat every once in a while, you ain't tried hard enough. All righty, just making my way down. I go by the two finger rule for everything. Everything seems to be two fingers long, two fingers wide, two fingers deep. And then once I get this exposure, I'm going to drop these beautiful custom retractors. And that's one of the ways I stay minimally invasive, by minimizing the surgical cord or trauma or collateral damage related to surgery. And I also stick my little pinky out to remind me that I should use, use a very gentle touch on everything. This is the S2 nerve root. The S2 nerve foramen is right here. Here's the root. And it splits off into two different nerves right here. And it's mostly this, this dinky little duplicated small nerve that had the Tarlov cyst but it goes all the way into the axilla, includes this nerve root. I have the operating microscope. This is a beautiful microscope, by the way. And I think for a few hundred thousand dollars, you too could have one at home. But now I have these awesome retractors. Look how perfect they are. Everything we use is like non-standard. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but all these little things, it's not just any one thing, but it's all the 100 different things that I do that make a big difference. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. Here's the cyst on the left side, it's clearly a cyst. That's what the normal nerve tissue should look like. It's white, it's small, it looks like a tube, and all of a sudden look what happens here. Doink! And it's so thin you can see through it. 
I want to peek at the other one on the right side to see if it's big enough to remove or should we leave it? Alrighty, I have both cysts exposed. There is a Tarlov cyst on the right side and it needs to be treated. I'll show you what that looks like in two seconds. Alrighty, I've got it all exposed. The one on the right is definitely needs to be treated. It's not big, but it's definitely a Tarlov cyst. Look at that, it's purple. The one on the left side was huge, this big. And as I was moving it over, it popped because you could literally see through it. It still needs to be broken up inside here, but this is really interesting. Here's the proximal normal part of the nerve right there. Here's the normal part of the nerve distally. And right here is where the cyst was. But look at this. There's another smaller nerve separating it out, sep bifurcating as they call it. So that's a normal nerve. It's separate from this nerve. And it joins right here. And the Tarlov cyst was in that armpit right at that junction. It was huge. So this is a highly unusual cyst that goes into the axilla. So that'll be a fun repair, but it'll come start out on this tiny little nerve and then come together in the combined nerve and go all the way up to this normal part. The one on the right is so easy. There's the normal nerve right there. There's the normal nerve right here. And the Tarlov cyst is just right there. And I bet you inside here, there's a septated little wall. This one's not nearly as thin as the other one. So we got everything exposed, we're ready to go. Now I gotta find the Zen, because I'm gonna have to close this with the tiniest little sutures you've, you've ever seen. Alrighty, so check out how funky this is. So that's the nerve, a tiny one, coming off the main nerve, which is not as big as the other side, which is normal. And they're combined right here. And that cyst goes all the way to the back wall of this. So this is going to be a complex repair, but this thing was huge. It was sticking out like a centimeter. You can see that's what the normal part of the nerve looks like. So I've got it all isolated. Okay, so let me... You can see the back side of the Tarlov cyst. Look how floppy that is. So that's going to be tricky. I mean, one. It is amazing. Everything is stuck to each other, which indicates lots of inflammation. So look at this. The fat is stuck to the outer part of the nerve, which is the facet cyst. I mean, the Tarlov cyst. You can see the wall of the Tarlov cyst. Look at that. All I got to say is not very nice considering all I've done for this cyst. All righty, the first thing I'm going to do is throw this proximal stitch even before I do anything. It's amazing how small the stitch is. So check this out. All this is just stuck to each other. Look at that. That's the wall of the cyst. Look how thin it is. It's all stuck to each other probably because of the inflammatory process. All right, so here's that tiny, dinky, puny little nerve. It's probably one millimeter wide, because this I think this sucker's two millimeters in diameter. There's the cyst. It was huge. It was stuck to this nerve, the main S2 nerve, but it wasn't actually a cyst in the nerve, but look how red and irritated that is. That's that. That's, look at this side. And then the other side. And then it ends right where these two nerves bifurcate. Just breaking up these little septations. I gotta keep the nerves okay. Alrighty, so this thing 
is like zero now. Really complicated because it's part of a conjoined nerve. So the Tarlov cyst was right in that axilla. So it came across, that looks really good. It's amazing how small that nerve is. But no more Tarlov cyst, now we're going after the small one. Look how big the small one looks like. And look at, look at what it looks like. It is so thin. Looks like it's about to pop if I look at it cross side. So same thing, I'm gonna put a stitch here and a stitch there to control it. I'll open this up, look inside. This one is probably gonna be a more normal Tarlov cyst because you can see it's part of a big normal nerve, not like this dinky little side nerve that was not very nice in making such a big cyst. Some people, I swear. All righty, here's the... end stitch that I used to control everything with. Look how thin it is. You can just see right through it. Alrighty, I am about to open up the other one, but I want to tag all these ends. It's my little cheating trick, but if you're having trouble seeing the suture, it's because it's about I don't know, a fourth the thickness of a hair. It's so thin. It's really annoying. If I just take a breath during the middle of a stitch, something happens. I'm like a sniper. I have to slow down my heart rate as I throw these stitches. All right, this facet, uh, this uh, tartar cyst is much more cooperative. I've got the two stay stitches, and now it's like asking me to incise it. You can see that little nerve. Look at that. Coming across here like this. But I'm not going to fall for that old trick. So it looks like there's a little spot right there. So you can see I've opened it. It should completely empty out in terms of spinal fluid. But there's all these like little septations that act like a one-way check valve. I'm going in. It's almost sad. It's like popping a pimple. It's kind of satisfying. Ooh, look at that, that's nerve. Uh, micro Penfield 4, it's like blue from the... Uh -huh. Give it a look. Right there, look at that. It's going like this. Whoop. The bigger Tarlov cyst that we just closed up did not have the room, uh, ramen noodle sign. Look at that, it's going up and down. Look at that. What kind of crazy business is that? But the other Tarlov cyst was so inflammatory, it was stuck to everything, so that's probably the main cause of symptoms, but this ramen noodle sign is probably related to the nerve stuck to the sidewall. Okay, so all those nerves are stuck, ramen noodle nerves, but not no more right there. That's good, and I gotta just do the same thing I'm the other side, and I got to reach in the middle and get all the septations out. This is going very well, though. Let me have the nerve hook. Except my feet are killing me. All righty, my side now, or this side. You can see the ramen noodle sign right there, all those little nerves. Oh, yes. See that? There's a septation right there. That dinky little thing causes so much grief. Go figure. The body's just an amazing thing. That's all there is to it. First of all, I'm really glad we did the right one because every time I release one of these adhesions, the right anal sphincter goes off on neuromonitoring. There it is. You can see these little septations. 
Of course, when I try to show you, I can't see it. I want to show you what's in here. Look at that. See that thin film of stuff? Look at that. Look at that like little film. What the hell? Look at that. See that? And it's stuck to everything. That's how tight all the space is. I'm using the 11 blade to dissect. I hope you can see how all these weird membranes are inside here. Look at the nerves. It's like they get crammed inside a little box car. And then said, grow. Oh my goodness, it's like, what Tarlov cysts? Look how good this one looks. It looks like a normal nerve, and I'm not even done yet. But this was tedious. What the dissection just took forever. Did I all righty, all done. It's almost normal looking on this side. That's really good. I'm really happy. We're valve salving now. Make sure there's no leak. There's none. It's watertight. That means you can get up and do just some jumping jacks. This was the bizarre, funky one. This tiny little nerve had a massive cyst, but not a lot of ramen noodle noodles. But it was together with this normal big nerve. But oh, that looks good. So we're all hoping you get a great result. I'm now going to basically semi provide a semicircular barrier around there using Durogen to really lock it in. Can't wait. Do you have the... Um, this is highly purified collagen matrix called Durogen. I don't like going circumferentially around nerves unless I absolutely have to because I'm always fearful that you'll get a constrictive scar. But sometimes you have to, but not in this case. Surgery's all done. It went really, really well. We're all rooting for you, and we're all praying for a speedy and robust recovery so you can get back to your busy life in New York. Best wishes.